All right, folks, the math just isn't math. And even Sam Altman admits it. We need $2 trillion in annual reven revenue just by 2030. That's like less than five years away to pay for the AI infrastructure that we're building. But we're already $800 billion short. And that's with the most optimistic projection. So OpenAI alone is planning $850 billion in data center builds outs, while their current revenue barely hits $20 billion. The man who sparked the AI frenzy is now warning about a bubble saying, quote, smart people will get overexcited and people will lose a lot of money, end quote. So how can an industry burn through $500 billion in capital expenditures every single year when the revenue streams can't at even come close to supporting it? The AI gold rush has created the biggest financial gap in tech history. Let's dive into the numbers today and I'm going to go over these reports. <laughs> All right, so the numbers coming out of the AI industry are absolutely staggering, and they're not adding up. Now, I'm not the only one noticing this. So Bain and company just released a report showing we need $2 trillion in annual revenue to sustain current AI infrastructure growth. But even in the best case scenario, we're $800 billion short. Now, this isn't just pocket change, folks. Meanwhile, Sam Altman, the guy who started the whole AI craze, is now openly admitting that we're in a bubble. The financial reality is finally catching up to the hype. But what's the answer going to be? So let's jump over to some of these articles today here because these are pretty. Uh, this is a pretty interesting thing, and I'm not making this up. I know you all know that I'm an AI realist. I'm not hating on AI like everybody likes to say. I'm an AI realist here, but I want to talk about some of these numbers here because I'm not the only one. AI buildout needs two trillion dollars in annual revenue to sustain growth, but massive cash shortfall looms. Even generous forecasts highlight 800 billion dollar black hole. Uh, a new Bain report says AI buildout will need two trillion dollars in annual revenue just to sustain its growth. That's just to sustain it. And the shortfall could keep GPUs scarce and energy grid strained through 2030. Now, one of the big things I have to say about the energy grid being uh, strained, guess who's going to pay that bill? Yeah, you and me. So AI's insatiable power appetite is both expensive and unsustainable. That's the main takeaway from the new report by Bain and Company. And again, I'm not making this up here, folks, right? This is the report. How can we meet AI's insatiable demand for compute power? Um, but more than $500 billion per year in global data center investments by 2030. Guys, like we're, it's October. Like we're, I mean, this is like four years away and we're going to be like trillion, billions of dollars, if not trillions of dollars short. It's a sobering reality check for a narrative currently surrounding AI, one that cuts through the trillion dollar parameter hype cycles and lands squarely in the physics and economics infrastructure. So that's the thing about this is at the end of the day, we need a lot of power. So the crux of Bain's argument is that compute demand is scaling faster than the tools that supply it. While Moore's law has slowed to a crawl, AI workloads haven't. Bain estimates that inference and training requirements have grown at more than twice the rate of transistor density, forcing data center operation operators to brute force scale rather than rely on uh, per chip efficiency gains. And this is what we've been seeing, right? It's this race to see how many hundreds of thousands of GPUs can we pack in. The result is a global AI compute footprint that could hit 200 gigawatts by 2030 with half of it in the U.S. alone. Um, that kind of headache is going to require massive, borderline inconceivable upgrades to local grids. Um, so he goes on to talk about this here. He's breaking all this down. But he's saying, meanwhile, the race continues. Microsoft recently bumped its Wisconsin AI data center spend to more than $7 billion, right? Um, Amazon, Meta, Google, each committed billions more as is XAI, but most of the funding is already spoken for in terms of GPU allocation and model development. Now, let's jump into another report here. Um, so some of the, the top thing here says, Sam Altman on worries about OpenAI's $850 billion in plan build out, I totally get it. He says OpenAI's, billion, OpenAI's $850 billion expansion equals the output of 17 nuclear plants, but he says, even that, that pace will look slow given surging demand. Altman is committed to the massive buildouts with Oracle, NVIDIA, and SoftBank. CFO, who previously took block, public stressed that the companies are stepping in to meet a, se a severe compute storage, storage. Shortage. Man, I can't get that word out. Now, I just want to know where these 17 nuclear power plants are going to come from because we're about nine equivalents of Hoover Dams. Like, this isn't just nothing, right? This is enough to power 13 million U.S. homes. That's insane. That's an insane amount of power that's needed for this. Um, now, this is a little dig, and I, I love some of these, but this is a little dig at how, you know, OpenAI is investing in Oracle, who's investing in NVIDIA, who's investing in OpenAI, right? Breaking news, Apple will be investing $100 billion in Apple to buy chips from Apple, right? Definitely a little tongue-in-cheek there. 
AI boom or bubble Bain forecast this huge thing. Um, and I wanted to hit on this part here. The revenue is likely to fall $800 billion short of that figure. That is just staggering. So like, even if revenue were to grow on an optimistic growth rate, they'd still be $800 billion short of the compute they would need. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. Pure insanity. Each gigawatt of capacity expected to cost roughly $50 billion. So meaning the company is laying the groundwork for at least $1 trillion in infrastructure spending. So this is OpenAI. I don't think we figured out the final form of what financing for compute looks like. Hmm, maybe you should figure that out. But I assume, like in many other technological revolutions, figuring out the right answer to that will unlock a huge amount of value delivered to society. Um, you know, because AI has like, changed society so far. All we ever seem to hear from these Egomax is how much money they're spending, how big the data structure will be, and how many gigawatts will be generated. Never a detail about the amount of value delivered to society. Nothing about products, revenue, or earnings. Just build it and they will come, right? This may be the equivalent of one upmanship skyscraper building a lead up to a 1929 crash, i.e. the Great Depression, right? Now, at the height of the dot-com bubble boost, American Metrocom Corp., a Louisiana phone carrier burning cash, was already interviewing bankruptcy lawyers. There was no rhyme or reason that anyone in their right mind would loan them money uh, who would be later become Metrocom's chief executive. But Cisco was happy to oblige. The Silicon Valley network giant extended more than $62 million in credit to Metro Metrocom, a lifeline that quickly translated into new sales of Cisco routers and switches. So, i.e., Cisco sold them a bunch $62 million in credit just to sell them a whole bunch more uh, routers and stuff. Metrocom wasn't alone. Over the late 1990s, Cisco poured billions into shaky telecoms firm through its financing, financing arm, Cisco Capital. The loans weren't gifts. They were a sales machine. Often the credit came into the form of Cisco gear itself. Does this sound familiar? Like NVIDIA investing into OpenAI? Um, by 2000, executives said such financing and leasing deals account for roughly 10% of Cisco's $20 billion in annual revenue. The strategy worked wonders while the bubble inflated, but as the telecom bust arrived, everyone knows the, the you know, dot-com bubble burst, the risk became harder to ignore. In 2001, Cisco acknowledged that many of its customers were unlikely to repay and set aside nearly $900 million for bad loans. This was $900 million in 2001. That's worth a lot today. One of those customers was Rhythm Net Connection at the Inglewood. Uh, so it goes on. Uh, but in early 2001, internal documents showed Cisco had racked up finance lease exposure of $1.3 billion, 2001, across 735 customers, including $231 million tied to high-risk borrowers. Once what looked like a cle clever growth hack had become a costly reminder that lending to struggling customers is no substitute for sustainable demand. So are we seeing the same thing happen over again? I, I'm kind of concerned that we are, right? Because Bain and Company's report says that we need $2 trillion by 2030, four years away. That's an astronomical figure. For context, that's roughly equivalent to the entire GDP of Canada and Australia combined. And they would need that every single year just for the AI data centers. Current AI revenue streams are nowhere close to that. OpenAI is hitting around $20 billion annually while planning $850 billion in infrastructure spending. Like, I've given this analogy before. But that's like my 17-year-old who just got their first couple hundred dollar paycheck saying they're going to go buy a Ferrari. The revenue gap is so massive that even if every company in the world shifted their entire IT budget to AI, we'd still fall hundreds of billions of dollars short. Think about that for a minute. This target assumes perfect execution, no economic, dam economic downturns, and unlimited demand growth, assumptions that have never held true in any tech cycle. But AI is different, right? This is different. I've heard that over and over. The CEO of OpenAI, the, um, the company that sparked the entire revolution, is now publicly admitting that we're in a bubble and investors are overexcited. And that's a quote from Altman. Altman compared the current situation to the dot-com boom, saying, when the bubble happens, people, smart people get overexcited about a kernel of truth. His exact quote is, are we in a phase where investors as a whole are overexcited about AI? My opinion is yes. Is AI the most important thing to happen in a very long time? My opinion is also yes. Now, I, again, he's spending, he, he's putting words in spending where he simply cannot, like where he doesn't have money. He's warning that smart people will get overexcited, and yet he's one of these smart people and he's still selling it. So when the person who benefits the most from the AI hype is warning about a bubble, you know the situation has reached dangerous levels. Now, as always, the best compliment you can give me is leave a comment down below um, because I love to hear from you guys, even if it's just to say hi, but tell me where you think I'm wrong. Tell me how you think. OpenAI is going to generate over a trillion dollars. 
I want to hear it. Now, OpenAI announced partnership with Oracle, NVIDIA, and SoftBank to build $850 billion worth of AI data centers, repre representing nearly half of the global AI infrastructure surge. This spend spending plan requires 17 gigawatts of power. Um, now, the scale is so massive that each individual data center site costs approximately $50 billion, more than the entire market capitalization of most Fortune 500 companies. So OpenAI's current annual revenue of $20 billion means that they need to maintain a current profitability for over 40 years just to pay off this infrastructure build-out. That's not any current burn, just the new infrastructure build-out. The company admits that they're growing faster than any business I've ever heard of, but even exponential growth rates cannot justify the level of capital expenditure. And plus, their growth tapered off because it was summertime and students don't want to um, cheat anymore. So critics point out that this creates a circular financing model where OpenAI pays partners who are simultaneously investing it and supplying the same projects. This is a problem, right? Even in the most optimistic scenario, Bain estimates that the AI industry will fall $800 billion short of the revenue needed. So traditional venture capital and private equity funding can't possibly fill a gap this large as it exceeds the total global venture investment by several multiples. So even if AI delivers all the promised productivity gains, the timeline for realizing those savings is measured in decades, while infrastructure costs are immediate. Now, on top of this, one of the other problems with these build-outs is AI hardware doesn't last as long as traditional uh, server build-outs. A server can normally last you uh, up to 10 years. Uh, GPUs are really only good for three at most four years. So AI's computational requirements are increasing at more than twice the rate of Moore's law, creating an unsustainable trajectory that can't be solved by hardware efficiencies. For decades, Moore's law drove technology progress by doubling transistor density every two years. But AI workloads are demanding exponential increases on raw computing power. So the gap between computational demand and hardware capacity is widening every single year. Now, by 2030, global AI infrastructure will require 200 gigawatts of power, with the United States accounting for half of that massive energy demand. To put this in perspective, the entire U.S. currently generates about 1,200 gigawatts, meaning AI alone will consume 10% of America's total power generation capacity. And this is also that you can make that silly video of your cat or have that uh, little AI assistant that you talk to, because that's the predominant use for the technology right now. Now, the AI requirements create environmental concerns that could trigger regulatory backlash, but under the current administration, these are going to sail right through. So traditional VC funding models can't support the scale of investment required, as the entire global venture capital industry only invests around $300 to $400 billion annually across all sectors. So if you stopped investing in everything and only invested in AI, we'd still be more than half short. AI companies are raising rounds that dwarf historical precedents, with single funding rounds exceeding the total annual revenue of most VC firms. So this capital concentration makes the entire AI ecosystem vulnerable to a single point of failure if investor sentiment shifts or economic cha conditions change. So there's also the circular investment problem. Many AI infrastructure deals involve circular financing where the same companies are investing in, supplying, and purchasing from each other, creating artificial demand. NVIDIA invests in AI companies that then purchase NVIDIA chips. Oracle provides data center services to companies that Oracle has equity stakes in. These create a closed loop system where money flows between the same set of companies rather than representing genuine market demand. So historical technology bubbles have shown that circular investment patterns are often the precursor to major market corrections. Now, <clears throat> every major technological bubble in history has followed the same pattern, massive infrastructure investment based on future projections, followed by a reality check when revenue doesn't materialize. The railroad bubble of the 1840s, the dot-com bubble of 1990s, and the crypto bubble of 2021 all feature similar disconnected uh, disconnects between investment and revenue generation. In each case, the technology event, uh, eventually provide, proved valuable, but not this, at the scale or timeline that justified the speculative investment levels. The current AI bubble shows all the classic science, but this time is different mentality, right? Circular investment patterns and valuations based on potential rather than performance. Even Sam Altman acknowledges this historical pattern, comparing current AI investments to the previous bubbles while continuing to participate in the same behavior. Because you know, at this point, he's got to go down with the ship. He is all in and he has to be. So the massive data center build out currently planned will likely create significant overcapacity 
as demands fail to meet the exponential projection driving investment decisions. Unlike software that can be easily scaled down, physical infrastructure creates fixed costs that must be paid regardless of utilization levels. The construction timelines for these projects mean that most facilities will come online simultaneously, creating a supply glut just as the market may be sobering up to realistic demand. So the companies with the strongest balance sheets, like Facebook, who can afford to be spending 40, 50, 60 billion a year, will likely acquire distressed infrastructure assets at significant discounts from over leveraged competitors. This cycle of overbuilding and consolidation may actually be necessary for the long-term health of the AI industry, but it'll be painful for current investors and employees and for the whole tech industry. Now, I'm curious to hear you guys' thoughts. What do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I love to have a great discussion. Here at Startup Pack, we love to train software developers as well as build custom software solutions for companies. So if we can help your company integrate your systems to work like a well-oiled machine, check out startuppack.com slash Spencer and here's some great information about our services. Hi, I'm Spencer, a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and 25 years in software development, I've transformed technology teams and products for businesses just like yours. As your fractional CTO, you get the strategic guidance of a seasoned technology executive without the full-time commitment. Perfect for companies ready to leverage cutting edge technology without expanding headcount. My team at Startup Hack has already built advanced AI agents for small and medium businesses, automating complex workflows and delivering advanced ROI to human workflows. We specialize in creating custom software that connects your systems into a single coherent technology ecosystem. Our development approach focuses on tangible business outcomes. For one client, we developed AI powered workflows that cut days off of human processes. For another company, by connecting multiple systems, we reduce processing time to increase their ROI by over 75%. We don't just write code, we architect solutions that scale. Whether you need cloud system architecture, data integration between legacy systems, or custom AI agents that automate your unique business processes, my team delivers results that exceed your expectations. Having led technology for a lot of companies and launched seven successful brands of my own, I bring battle-tested expertise to your business challenges. Our specialty is turning technological complexity into business advantage. So if you're ready to harness the power of AI and custom software to drive your business forward, let's connect Together, we'll build technology that doesn't just solve today's problems, it positions you for tomorrow's opportunities. Technology leadership, decades of experience, AI powered. Reach out today and we can help you. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer.